This BSC Library tutorial will talk about information evaluation using the CRAAP test. CRAAP is an acronym for Currency, Reliability, Authority, and Purpose. Following this tutorial, students should be able to name the parts of the CRAAP test. They should also be able to identify CRAAP pieces when assessing an information source. And lastly, the students will be able to apply the CRAAP test on any source of information. So how can you determine accuracy when evaluating online information sources? State Farm Insurance ran an ad a while ago where this young woman said, they can't put anything on the internet that's not true, right? As she introduced her French model boyfriend who looked nothing like a French model. We can use something we call the CRAAP test. CRAAP once again stands for Currency, Reliability, Authority, and Purpose. Currency, or when something was written, is likely the easiest factor to determine. Knowing when information was published or last updated is important in some areas. Think about medical research. On the other hand, if you're looking at an historical perspective, more dated material is okay because you're looking back at a topic. Where do you find the information on these sources? An online article may or may not have a published date clearly listed. If there is no date at the top of with the article, you might want to scroll to the bottom and see if there is anything that says last updated somewhere on the page. If all you find is a copyright date listed, this is not the last updated or published date. Copyright merely means that the content is owned by the page's authors. Database articles, because they are generally a scholarly source, will have a published date. Reliability is the toughest part of the CRAAP test. We need to check for validity and truthfulness in the sources we look at at the internet. There's an old saying, if it seems too good to be true, it likely is too good to be true. A good measure for validity or truthfulness is being able to find at least two other respected sources listing the same facts or drawing the same conclusions. The key in this sentence is respected sources. You will need to run the CRAAP test multiple times to verify information you're finding on the general internet. Here's some questions you can ask yourself. Is the claim or information outlandish or unreasonable? For example, think about a website that claims you can lose an extravagant amount of weight in just a few days. Second, is this the only place I'm reading about this concept? Thirdly, is it a primary or a secondary source? Is it an actual study or is it someone telling you about a study? Was it peer reviewed? Remember, peer review means that experts on the topic have read through the information and looked at its validity. Are there study methods or references provided? Is the information general or detailed? And is the information balanced or is it biased? Lastly, what audience was this information written for? The A in the CRAAP test represents authority or simply who wrote the article. Was it written by one person or several people? Is the author credit listed as a corporation or an organization? Think about the American Heart Association or any of the federal government publications. Are the author's credentials provided? And can you determine the author's expertise or reputation? This is where you can put your internet sleuthing skills to work. You'll need to look for a resume online somewhere. Did the article you find share a short biography of the author? If you search the author's name, do you find that they have published many other articles on the topic? And lastly, do you find any articles that refute or discredit any of the author's publications? Let's run through a few examples of how we determine authority. The first example comes from a journal article. The author's names are listed prominently at the top of the article. If I hover over their names, I'll notice that one of them works for the Department of Biochemistry and Biotechnology at a university in Greece. It also gives me information on how to contact this person. This would be an example of a corporation or organization as author. It is the Xerxes Society, well known and well respected for their work with pollinators. 
In order to determine the expertise of any of the authors for this page, we could go to the staff directory and read the biographies of the people who work here. The last example is author credentials from a blog posting. Bethany Ivy claims that she has five easy ways to save the bees and the world. What an incredible claim. So just exactly who is Bethany Ivy? There is no biographical information for her within the Heifer International page. A Google search teaches us that she is a writer. Does she have any expertise in how to save the bees and the world? The last letter in the acronym is P, which stands for purpose. You'll need to ask yourself for online material. What does this website want for me? Is it asking me to purchase something? Does it want me to take an action? For instance, vote, circulate a petition, demonstrate at an event? Does it want me to send money to support a specific cause? Or does it want me to read and find factual information, including both positive and negative aspects of the topic? It also could be that the website only wants me to read factual information. Again, you need to think about who is the intended audience for this page. Did the person who wrote it have a first-hand experience of an event? Or is it a research topic? And lastly, does the author have a vested interest in the topic? Think about organizations and societies that support a specific cause and who is writing the pages for them. Let's review websites to determine how we figure out what their purpose is. Starting with the Xerxes Society, I notice that there are several large donate buttons on their front page. So is their purpose only to get me to donate money to them for their cause? I can look at the About link to see if they list anything about their mission or purpose. I see that they do. I can read that to determine whether they are a biased organization, only collecting money, or if their purpose is to work with pollinator repopulation. The next website is the International Bee Research Association, a name that implies that they are more serious about this topic. Their goal is to protect the value of bees by providing information on bee science and beekeeping worldwide. How would I determine if they actually live up to that reputation? Well, once again, I could look at the About Us link to read their mission and goals. But more so, I notice that they have a tab that says Journals. This is likely where they have published their research and the information I would be interested in. The last website we'll look at is one of those only factual information websites. The North Dakota Secretary of State has a website on voting privileges. It does not try to convince you to do anything. It is only information on how, where, and when to vote. There are some final considerations you can look at when determining whether something you found with a general internet search has validity or not. The domain name or .com, .org, .gov, .edu, all those domain names have certain characteristics and restrictions as to who can use them. You might want to check that out. Does the website contain advertisements or other distractions rather than just being factual information? And lastly, could the site be ironic, like satire or a spoof? Think about the Pacific Tree Octopus. If after watching this tutorial you feel you need more help, the librarians are here to help you with your research. You can give us a call at 701-224-5450. We're also available by email at bsc Dot library at bismarckstate.edu or you are welcome to stop in the library at the reference desk to ask for help in person. Good luck with your research!